Namaste. Welcome to Vedic Vidya. My name is Jeffrey Armstrong, Kavindra Rishi. Vedic Vidya is available exclusively on Chetty Media English Channel on Thursday and Sunday nights, 7 p.m. IST. Our topic this evening is how Greek and Roman scholars were educated by ancient India, or ancient knowledge the Greeks and Romans borrowed from India without a thank you. Today we're going to be talking about a historical topic that you would expect that groups of professors at universities would have expertise in different departments of what we're going to look into. So we're going to do quite a bit in a small space of time, or we're going to get started on it. And I'm going to use one of my favorite universities as a bit of a punching bag. After all, big universities deserve that because they're so self-righteous. But all of us scholars sound like we're know-it-alls. It's up to you, the listener, to listen to all of us and then try to research the materials we give you and to sort it out. Don't believe anything you hear right away. And don't believe in someone's authority because they speak from Oxford on high or any other Ford. So let me start out by telling you something humorous. First, I've told you I respect these great universities and I have degrees from quite a few of them. So we don't want to denigrate them. But we can make fun of them, right? Especially when they exceed the boundaries of their academic credentials. So let me first share with you that the word Oxford had a humble beginning. You know, perhaps, that in older English, Ford means the place where the cattle cross the river. And so Oxford was the place where the oxen, the bulls, cross the river. And of course, that means that Oxford University has to be careful that it doesn't pass bull shit off as scholarship. So why would a university do that? Not just Oxford, but any university. Could it be that the source of their endowment, of the money that is given to them to be a university, comes with a clause that says, oh, and you must do the following things and say the following things because that's the party line and we're not going to fund you unless you do? Well, Oxford's not alone in feeling this pressure. And throughout history, especially during the colonizing era, Universities were put to the service of the colonization that was going on. So what I'm saying this for is to establish the idea that universities, often very useful and often very truthful, are the best liars. Because at certain times in history, they were paid to lie and who was paying them or not paying them was also threatening them. In other words, they were coerced into writing a history that justified colonizing the world. And not only Oxford and not only Harvard, but all of the big universities in the Christian colonizing world made up stories and passed them off as history. Just like his story is not always her story. In a way, now that we have so much media, I would say we're getting a little more savvy to not believe everything we hear, but to actually investigate and go back into its roots. So here's the biggest lie that you've been told by Oxford and other universities. It is that Western civilization began with the Greeks 
proceeded through the Romans and that we don't need to look any further back than that. That story, that lie, was to prevent the history of India from being understood because it would invalidate the 6,000 year history of the Judeo-Christian religions who all believe that the world began 6,000 or so years ago, beginning with Judaism and then Christianity and then Islam, you could say they are the religions with no history or who denied history. And modern science denied those religions and said, we're tired of your religious viewpoint, we just want the facts. But that too couldn't exactly overcome the pressures of Christian culture, of universities. And it's only recently, only in my lifetime, perhaps the 50 years before that, that people from the Western civilizations have decided that there's a huge storehouse of valuable information in the country we're calling India. And that that storehouse of information has books with astronomical data that proves 8, 10, 15, 20,000 years ago there was a very dynamic, active culture in India. Thousands of years before Europe even existed, was nothing more than an expanse of tribalism, before there was the Greek culture, before there was a Roman culture, there was a Vedic culture. And the evidence for this is now overwhelming. One reason is that the Mahabharat, a famous work that it contains the Bhagavad Gita, and is 100,000 Sanskrit verses. Imagine, a single book is 100,000 verses. This is 10 or 12 volumes in English translation. And this is one of a library of such books that exists, and it's called the Veda. And therefore, our show, Vedic Vidya. Meaning, you haven't been told these stories yet. I hadn't been. And my life has been changed by hearing them because my historical perspective has gone back thousands of years. My linguistic perspective is that English is like a pig Latin compared to Latin, which is much smarter, compared to Greek, which preceded it. But none of them can hold a candle to a language called Sanskrit or Samskritam, the most perfect language that was actually perfected so that knowledge could be passed through history. If the English language has 26 letters, the Sanskrit alphabet has 50, has 4,000 grammatical rules, has roots and word roots, concepts that are not found in Greek or Latin or English or European cultures, and yet it's now clearly linguistically been proven with no way of contradicting it that the Greek language and the Latin language are descendants of the Sanskrit language of India. This is irrefutable scholarship now. This means that we were told a lie about the antiquity of the culture of India because it contradicted the fundamental premises of the three religions that believed the universe is no older than 6,000 years. To give you a simple example, and with no disrespect any, to any of these people, they can hold whatever view they want. But in a Hasidic Jewish family, you are not allowed to say the word dinosaur. Bet you didn't know that. Because it's contradiction to 
the scripture because dinosaurs were, what, hundreds of thousands of years ago? But we weren't around then, says the scripture. Sorry, you can't say that. Nothing existed before 6,000 years ago. What does science think of that? Absurd. What do you think of it? Do you believe it? Have you looked into, now let me give you a term. So those three religions often call themselves people of a book. To be fair, let's say a few books before the printing press. Let's just say they have a few books. So what is the difference then between that and the culture of India? Well, India has a library in this most perfect language that I was talking about. Were you taught this in school? Were you taught that a minimum of 10 to 15,000 years ago, this most perfect language has a library of culture that was being enacted and passed down throughout that history? No, I wasn't. I had the standard Western education right up through three university degrees. No one ever told me that. I had to learn that from the professors from India who said, you know, when they colonized us, they twisted our history. They refused it because it didn't match their paradigm. And I call modern science the runaway abused child of the medieval Catholic Church. Trying to be scientific only got you traumatized. And why was this? Because if you study history, you'll know this. And this is noted in our history, Western history. Were there not library burnings? Did not Christianity so-called, I hate to call it that because I know Jesus wouldn't have done it. I think Muhammad would have been embarrassed by Islamic book burnings, library burnings. But why, please tell me, did religious people go and burn libraries containing thousands and millions of volumes? The Library of Alexandria burned for weeks. There were others like that literally burned for weeks. When the British colonized India, they would take books from the library of Vedic knowledge and use them to burn them and heat up their bath water so they could take a bath. So we've been given a story about the Greeks and the Romans, once again, that caters to the politics of the existing civilizations of the time. And the universities, try as they would be to be universal, are not, have not been. They've let us down. And so this is my challenge to Oxford, to Harvard, to all of these universities. Get over yourself. Get over your bureaucracy. And let's re-examine the evidence together, shall we? And let's not be the tools of a political viewpoint that wants world dominance. Let's just tell the truth. And this is something that I won't say they invented it, but they sure perfected it. The Sanskrit language and the knowledge of India. Now, here's a simple example. What does the word education mean? Where did it come from? Well, you might see in the dictionary, it comes from educari in the Greek which means something that comes out from within. Though I suggest to you that nowadays education is piling a bunch of stuff on top. But before that, it comes from the Sanskrit word adi kari. Any linguist will know this. And adi kari in Sanskrit means the level of qualification of the student after many lifetimes of development and growth in their capability to know and understand. It became abbreviated in the Greek to bringing out what's inside. And in education, it's knowledge dumped on top of us so we can go get a job. Or it's knowledge catering to a political system that pays its bills and grants it endowments so it will not say things that contradict its worldview. Sorry, that's just a fancy way of saying lying. And the evidence exists now, so why aren't we examining it? With all of our technology, why aren't there shows on television? Why aren't there radio shows and television shows 
News at five, you've been lied to, folks. You haven't been told the whole story. So keep what you have, meaning don't just run out and change your belief system because I say so, but look into it. Investigate it. Give it a listening. What I say to my friends who are people of a book, I say, good, I've read your book. Have you read our library of Vedic Vidya? That's why this show is called Vedic Vidya, because I'm someone who went through the complete Western education and was dissatisfied and knew I had been lied to and hadn't been told the whole truth. How? I met professors of Sanskrit. My professor of Sanskrit from Banaras in India had memorized the 4,000 grammatical rules of Sanskrit. 4,000 rules. How many grammatical rules did you learn to learn English? How many English grammatical rules can you recite back to me right now? And the answer is, duh. 4,000 grammatical rules. Sound like an inconvenience or something that makes a language so precise that it's almost mathematics? That is Sanskrit. But no one has told you this because they don't want you to know this. Because this flatly denies the history you've been told, just like the dinosaurs did, just like the dinosaurs do. So if you really want to take science to its next level, ask where it came from. Did you know that there's a book that's 2,600 years old from India called the Shashruta Samhita? That's the book on how surgery is to be performed. And at that time in history, in India, they were doing cataract operations. Did you know that smallpox vaccine and the idea to make vaccines came from India? Did you know that there's another one called the Charaka Samhita? It's a complete book of medicines that come from plants and how to eat foods and plants to cure various conditions. It's a complete book of medicine before we even had what vaguely resembled medicine in Western civilization. And that's just two. There are books on astronomy, on Ganita, on mathematics. Did you know that binary mathematics of modern day computing technology, I worked for Apple Computer for three years as their Middle Eastern sales manager, and I worked in Silicon Valley where all this technology came from. Did you know that binary mathematics, the basis of all programming of computers, came from the Rig Veda in India? It did not come from the Greeks. Did you know the Greeks hated zero? They hated it. How can you have mathematics if you hate zero? Would you like to balance your checkbook with Roman numerals? Try it. Go out and get some Roman numerals, X, I, V, V, I, X. I, 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 I don't want to balance my checkbook with Roman numerals. And yet you've been fed a lie that this is culture. That was it. The only thing the Romans invented that was really of great interest was armies that could mow down every civilization. And then they took everything from that civilization. Did beneficial things happen? Yeah. Throughout history, beneficial things have happened. Well. Terrible things were happening. So on this show, I'm here to share things with you that you can't get at Oxford or Harvard or at any other university. Because right now, I believe that's what this media is about. The truth can be said. And in this moment where a lot of lies, and if it bleeds, it leads, can also drive the show Pay attention. Ask questions. In 20 minutes, I don't have time to tell you how much the Greeks and the Romans learned from India. As a matter of fact, at that time in history, did you know that 150 ships a year were going from Rome to India? That the Romans had dock workers who were from India? And do you think any knowledge was passing back and forth? Wait, let me think. So. We haven't been told how immense the connection between the Greeks and the Romans and the culture of India was just a couple of thousand years ago. In the same time period when Jesus 
supposedly appeared at that very same time, 150 ships a year were going back and forth between India and Rome. Now, there is no proof in the Roman Senate record that Jesus even existed. I'm not being negative, I'm just telling you. There is no proof. But in the Senate record of Rome at that time, there's an entry that says we've got to stop spending all our money buying silk saris for our wives from India. Did anyone ever tell you that in history class? It's funny. It's not only historically incredible, it's funny. We've got to stop buying all these silk saris for our wives. It's breaking our bank. Jesus who? So what's known for sure is that the knowledge of India was filtering through into the Greek culture and the Roman culture and therefore our culture and no one has wanted to talk about this. So thank you for listening. That's what Vedic Vidya is about. Talking about things that people haven't wanted to talk about in a friendly and respectful way. Why? Because Satyam Eva Jayate. The truth eventually prevails. Thanks for listening and Namaste. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad, Namaskar.